Hello dear students, my name is Tiao Bang and I welcome you to our online tutorials in chemistry for class 11. Today being the first class, we will start with a topic from unit 1, some basic concepts of chemistry. The topic that I chose to start with today is the laws of chemical combination. So we have the first law here, the law of conservation of mass. This law states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. In other words, this law can also be stated like this. During the course of any chemical or physical change, mass of matter remains constant, though the matter may change its form. Or we can also say it like this. The total mass of reactants is always equal to the total mass of the products during the course of any chemical or physical change. Let us try to understand it with this illustration. Suppose in a reaction, A moles of A react with B moles of B to give C moles of C and D moles of D. According to this law, total mass of the reactants, that is A plus B, should be equal to total mass of the products, that is C plus D. So, suppose 5 gram of A reacts with 10 gram of B to give 13 gram of C and X gram of D. What should be the mass of the product D that is produced in this reaction? So using this law again, total mass of the reactants, that is 5 plus 10 gram, will be equal to total mass of the products, that is 13 plus x gram. Therefore, x will be equal to 5 plus 10, that is 15 minus 13. We get 2 grams of the product D. The second law is the law of definite proportions or definite composition. This law states that a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by weight. This means that if we have the same chemical compound, no matter from what source we obtain it, it will always contain the same elements combined in a fixed ratio by mass. Let us Let's see another example to understand this law also. Suppose we take water. Water can be obtained from different sources. We can obtain it from underground. We can obtain it from the rain. We can synthesize it in the lab also. We can obtain it as a byproduct of many chemical reactions. But from whatever source we obtain it, water always contains two elements, that is hydrogen and oxygen. Now if we see the masses of hydrogen here, the mass of one hydrogen atom is 1. There are two hydrogen atoms here, so the mass of the two hydrogen atoms will be 2. And the mass of oxygen atom is 16. The ratio in which the masses of these two atoms combine is 2 is to 16 or we can simplify it as 1 is to 8. No matter from what source we obtain water, it will always contain the elements hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 1 is to 8 by mass. Similarly, if we take another compound, carbon dioxide, the mass of carbon in this compound is 12, Mass of oxygen will be 16 into 2, since there are two atoms here, so 16 into 2 gives us 32. The ratio of masses is 12 is to 32, which we can simplify it as 3 is to 8. So, no matter from what source we obtain this compound carbon dioxide, it will always contain the two elements carbon and oxygen combined in the ratio 3 is to 8 by mass. So once again, I'm repeating the law. The same chemical compound or a given compound will always contain exactly the same proportion of elements by weight. Now, the third law is the law of multiple proportions. According to this law, if two elements 
can combine to form more than one compound. The masses of one element that combine with a fixed mass of the other element are in the ratio of small whole numbers. Let us try to understand this with an illustration. Hydrogen and oxygen are two elements. These two elements they can combine to form two different compounds. Water, that is H2O, and hydrogen peroxide, that is H2O2. Now, if we see the mass of hydrogen in this water, the mass of hydrogen is 2, mass of oxygen is 16. In hydrogen peroxide, mass of hydrogen is 2, mass of oxygen will be 16 into 2, that is 32. Now we fix the mass of hydrogen at 2 grams. What are the masses of oxygen that combine with this fixed mass of hydrogen in the two compounds? We have 16 and 32. The different masses of oxygen that combine with a fixed mass of hydrogen in these two compounds is in the ratio 16 is to 32, which can also be written as 1 is to 2. So what does the law say again? If two elements can combine to form more than one compound, the masses of one element that combines with a fixed mass of the other element are in the ratio of small whole numbers. To understand this properly, let us see another example. Carbon and oxygen combines to form two compounds, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. In carbon dioxide, the mass of carbon is 12, mass of oxygen is 16. In carbon monoxide, mass of carbon is 12 and mass of oxygen is 16. Here it should be 16 into 2 since there are two atoms, so 16 into 2 should give us 32. We fix the mass of carbon at 12 grams. The masses of oxygen, 16 and 32, which combine with the fixed mass of carbon, 12, in these two compounds is in the ratio 32 is to 16, which is just this 2 is to 1, a simple whole number ratio. So this illustrates the law of multiple proportions. Now the fourth law that we have is the Gay-Lussac law of gaseous volumes. This law states that when gases combine or are produced in a chemical reaction, they do so in a simple ratio by volume provided all gases are at the same temperature and pressure. Now, according to this law, the volumes of gaseous reactants will bear a simple ratio between themselves and also with the volumes of the products if the products are also gaseous. Let us try to understand it with an example again. Hydrogen, a gas, combines with another gas, nitrogen, to give ammonia, which is also a gas. Now, the balanced chemical equation for this reaction is one mole of hydrogen combining with sorry three moles of hydrogen combining with one mole of nitrogen giving two moles of ammonia if we see the volumes three volumes of hydrogen combined with one volume of nitrogen to give two volumes of ammonia so if we see the volumes of this gaseous reactants and the volume of the product also they are in a simple whole number ratio 3 is to 1 is to 2. So according to gay lussacs law of gaseous volumes, the volumes of the gaseous reactants bear a simple ratio between themselves and also with the volume of the products if the products are gaseous. The fifth law that we have 
is the Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules. So if we have different types of gases, if they are maintained at the same temperature and pressure, and if we take equal volumes of all these gases, then they will contain the same number of molecules. Let us just take three containers. Let us see the volume of all these three containers is one liter each. We take three different gases, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. We maintain the temperature of all these three gases at 25 degrees centigrade and at one atmosphere pressure. If all these three gases are at the same temperature and pressure conditions, and if we take equal volumes of all the three gases, then all of them will contain the same number of molecules. Therefore, suppose one liter of hydrogen gas under these conditions contain 10,000 hydrogen molecules, then these two gases also will contain 10,000 molecules each. So according to Avogadro's law, equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules. Next, we go to Dalton's atomic theory. Now, the concept that all matter or all substances are made up of numerous tiny particles called atoms was first put forth by the Greek philosophers, but did not have any scientific proof to support your theory. It was only in 1805 that John Dalton, an English scientist, could give a strong scientific basis to this old theory, and he gave this in the form of a theory which is called as Dalton's atomic theory. So let us see some main postulates or main points from this Dalton's atomic theory. The first postulate is that matter consists of indivisible particles. So according to Dalton, matter is made up of very, very small particles which are indivisible. And these indivisible particles he called as atoms. The second point, all atoms of a given element have identical properties, including identical mass. Atoms of different elements differ in mass and properties. So if we take atoms of the same element, if we take atoms of hydrogen, no matter where it is present, it, it may be present in the form of a compound, in certain compounds, it may be present as a molecule or just as an atom. No matter where it is present, all atoms of hydrogen will be similar in properties as well as in mass. They will have the same mass as well as properties. But if we take atoms of different elements, suppose we take atoms of hydrogen, then that of oxygen, nitrogen, we know that all these have different masses. Since they have different masses, they will have different properties also. Then the third point is that compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Compounds are formed when atoms are formed or combined in a fixed ratio. So we take carbon, an element, we take another element, oxygen. If atoms of these two elements are combined in a fixed ratio by mass, suppose they are combined in the ratio 12 is to 16, then they will give rise to a compound carbon monoxide. However, if they are combined in the ratio 12 
is to 32, then it will give rise to another compound that is carbon dioxide. Similarly, hydrogen and oxygen are two different elements. If atoms of these two elements combine in the ratio 2 is to 16, then this two will give rise to a compound H2O, which is water. So the third postulate of Dalton's atomic theory states that compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. The fourth postulate is that chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms. These are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. According to John Dalton, chemical reactions involve reorganization or rearrangement of atoms only. They are neither created nor destroyed. Let us try to understand this with an example. Suppose zinc, zinc metal, is treated with sulfuric acid. These two combines to form zinc sulfate and then hydrogen gas is liberated. Now if we just see this reaction, we have zinc metal combining with sulfuric acid. The zinc atom here combines with the sulfate group from the acid to form zinc sulfate and then hydrogen from the acid will be given out as a gas. All the atoms in the reactants are found on the product site. They have neither been created nor lost. No new atoms have been formed or none of the atoms on the reactants have been lost. They have just been rearranged to form these new compounds. So once again, I'm repeating the fourth postulate. Chemical reactions involve reorganization of atoms. These are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Now, this atomic theory of John Dalton, it has some very serious limitations and drawbacks also. But this was one of the first scientific bases to explain about these atoms. And basing on this, uh, other theories were also developed. And Dalton's atomic theory also could explain all the laws of chemical combinations. So, uh, we will stop here for today. We will continue in the next class. Thank you.